Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for August 4th. Still out of New York. And uh, as usual, before we get into the news, and I will try to include it on the timeline, I noticed I didn't do that on yesterday, so I will update them both. But uh, just a bit of a preamble, stuff from the uh, comment section, some of which ties into the news stories today. So the first thing I want to talk about is the continuing saga of people complaining about HTC customer service. This will directly tie into a news bit later, but I understand your frustration. I will continue to work with anyone that has an issue in getting it escalated. And therein lies the BS of the whole thing. Why are we still escalating it? Three months later, you would think that Daniel O'Brien, and I could be wrong, maybe he has done this, ripped Tier 1 support an everlasting new hole. And you know what I mean by that, right? For all we know, that's happened behind the scenes, but it doesn't, if it did, it hasn't had an impact. They're still not getting it. You guys are reporting to me cases where the same HMD that you sent with an issue is sent back, right? Without an explanation. And hear me out on this one real quick. It could be that they got the unit, because the first thing they're going to do when they get the unit, okay, they read the issue. Customer says HMD doesn't work, no screen. Okay, uh, Jack, get the new uh, cable, the new three-in-one for me on the shelf, will you? Uh, the one that we use for all the testing that we know works. All right, puts it in. What do you know? There's a picture. Oh, okay, it was a faulty cable. Let's back, pack this up, close the ticket, and move on to the next ticket. Now, within that series of events, a lot of things have happened. The first of which is... And I get this because the HMD for the Vive is a notoriously tight fit for the HDMI. Super tight. 9 out of 10 HDMI cables will not fit. It uses a very slim uh, HDMI connection. Basically, the HDMI connector itself with the barest of surrounding shell to plug in directly all the way. So you could have an HMD screen issue try a new HDMI cable, still not get a picture, and be convinced it's the HMD. I'm not saying this is the case for those of you who reported that to me. I'm just saying it is a possibility. But that still doesn't let them off the hook because if that was the case, they need to report that back. Any good help desk department, any decent person using a ticketing system is going to convey resolution to the end user, to the customer, right? Maybe not the full technical one, but an explanation. Tested unit with three-in-one cable unit works. One simple freaking sentence so that the person knows. And as an added, include a new cable. So they accomplish a couple of things there. They educate the customer without being insulting, right? They supply a three-in-one HDMI and USB cable they know works and the customer will use to plug in. And then they close the ticket. So they've satisfied the customer. They've ensured the issue is resolved as far as the customer is concerned because they're going to be using the cable both parties will know works. Okay. Because the other side of that coin is the person gets his unit back. If there's no explanation, he doesn't know it's the cable. He still thinks it's the HMD or she and is convinced that they just sent them back the same non-working unit. When in fact, had they communicated it and included a new cable set, the problem would have been solved. A customer would have been made happy. So there's no excuse for that. Maybe Daniel ripped them a new one behind the scenes. But like I said, it has had no impact if that's the case, because I'm still hearing this from you guys, right? The other issue is them not getting back to you on status or not being able to properly track the status of an item yourself, right? Having one, two, three weeks of limbo where you get the barest of text responses to the status of your unit. That's also unacceptable, right? Plain and simple. We're not letting Rift off the hook. We know there are issues with DRM. I'm also going to touch on that today, right? So it's a fine line. We want to vote with our wallets, but at the same time, we just want to use the damn VR and be happy with it as first adopters. And 
in a sense, they can take advantage of that, right? Because if we truly voted with our wallets and all sent our units back en masse, do you want to bet that their tier one department would change for the better? It would be instant. Within an hour, the entire lot would be fired, a new crew put in with strict orders of what to do. But because we're early adopters, they've got us in a tight spot right up against the wall, and they know it. And that's BS. But let's move on to the news, guys. Keep your problems coming. I promised you guys, if there's issues, I'm going to do what I can to help you moving forward. So in the news, hopefully a, a, a less heavy subject, um, XLord B, one of the viewers on this channel who's been around for a while, always has cool links, <laughs> like a lot of you do, sent me a link on some new batteries. And the batteries are really cool. It's an Israeli company called StoreDot. And they have proposed this. They did a, a Kickstarter type, uh, you know, funding project for this. Their goal is to have devices, battery devices, charge up in seconds, right? So they had a demonstration where they charged a Samsung phone in under a minute. So it's not the seconds they talked about, but still impressive, right? Now, as a disclaimer, None of what they have said or tested, you know, have I seen properly be documented. So this could be all a bunch of BS. And I just want you to be aware of that. The facts are not sketchy, but they're not really properly tested and looked at or just verified by somebody else, right? So we're kind of taking their word for it at this point. But suppose with me that this is, in fact, a viable technology, right? Because they claim that they are using a different charging technology, right? And it's based on synthesized organic molecules, whatever that means, right? Well, we kind of know what that means, but it's like the um, thorium highways and uh, there's another YouTuber who does hilarious stuff on hoaxes and debunk stuff, right? That could be the case here. We don't know. But assuming it's it's real, that makes it very interesting for wireless, right? You could have an HMD that's self-powered, that communicates wirelessly with your PC or some kind of, you know, Steam box or whatever the hell, console even, so you don't have the cable burden, right? Uh, and at the same time, you're not having to charge your unit. Now, they want to eventually get into cars. They don't mention HMD specifically, but HMDs is an obvious area to benefit from this type of technology, right? Instead of charging your unit every 90 minutes, which would be a pain in the ass, uh, you know, you may be charging it uh, every day, but that charges a minute, 30 seconds, not three, four, five, six hours, right? So promising technology. I will have a link below as usual. Next story deals with a Netflix series called Stranger Things. And it, uh, Winona Ryder, who's kind of dropped out of Hollywood after she had that theft thing for, God, I think that was like 15 years ago now. Hell of a long time ago. She stars in this series and it's got that same Friday the 13th vibe. The um, Stephen King... Uh, Oh, man, I'm totally, it's missing my brain. The one with Will Wheaton, Stand By Me, that one. <laughs> it's kind of got that vibe as well, right? Anyways, there's a trailer, it's just under two minutes, and they don't specify exactly which devices. Uh, it sounds like it's just the, the Google Cardboard at this point. Could be the Samsung as well. And basically, they put you in the role of the person taking this phone call in this spooky living room. Really, really well done from what I could see. Haven't tested it, but I do plan on ordering a Samsung, a Google Cardboard, the Sony PlayStation, and an OS VR. All in due time, as I can afford them. But within the next 6 to 12 months, I hope to have one of all of those. And just be able to test and provide, you know, newsworthy stuff on all of them. But... Uh, yeah, it looks very well done. If anyone is out there who has the ability to look at that and has looked at that, let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious because I still maintain 360 degree content has all kinds of possibilities. It just needs to be utilized properly and delivered properly, not the fish lensy 
really bad porn stuff, uh, but more quality. And we've seen some of that, the Mr. Robot one, for example, but there's all kinds of potential for even more down the pipe. Now, the next news item I found really interesting in that uh, Valve has opened the Vive's tracking technology to third parties, essentially for free. Well, sort of. They are charging a $3,000 kind of training, you could call it a licensing fee for a perpetual license, right? And once you've paid that, you can use it commercially, whatever. Now, you still have to supply the units or have customers have the units. So who would this appeal to? Well, it could appeal to people who have the Vive already, maybe want to buy an OS VR, right? Those people would benefit in that any devs who create something using that tracking technology for the OSVR, which itself is open source, you're not having to buy the base stations again, right? They're, I think, about 200 bucks Canadian each. So it's a significant investment. So if you don't have a Vive, say you have a Rift, say you have the Samsung Gear, you would still have to buy the tracking stations and it would cost you 400 plus taxes, right? Or, or 400 after taxes, uh, Canadian. So US, that's going to be a little lower. Some other places that might be a little higher. My point being, it's about the price of a new console to have to extend that functionality to other devices. But the fact that we can, that they've truly kind of kept, it's not open source, but they've kept at least an open door policy on their technology, allowing other people to use Steam VR. Yes, there's catches, I know that, but it's still a far cry better than the Oculus Store in terms of who can use it, right? The Now the tracking technology, they never came out and were as loud and overbearing on the whole DRM thing as, you know, Lucky and the, and the gang was. They were really up on that. And that's what pissed people off so much because the reality was it, almost literally the opposite of what they had been preaching leading up to launch, right? And thus pissed people off, disappointed people, because it looked like they backtracked, and they did to some extent, on their original word, right? They will say they were misquoted and, you know, misparaphrased, etc. But the bottom line is they BSed about it, and they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar, and they're trying to do damage control, right? So the fact that third parties can use this Valve never hyped that aspect, the DRM, the open. They had wishes and expressed desire for commonality, right? But they look better for it. And it's an interesting contrast because it's a partnership with HTC. Valve's not losing tons and tons of money. HTC is. Valve, with regards to the Vive, has been fairly open, fairly inclusive. HTC, on the other hand, is known mostly for shitty supply chain and crappy customer service. So it's this crazy contrast, not just between HMDs, but between two halves of the same damn coin in HTC Vive's case, right? You've got Valve trying to open things up and HTC burning the whole damn thing down uh, in some weird kind of scorched earth policy when it comes to customer service. So we will see how that ends up. But I think it's a really cool step. And like I said, there is all kinds of potential uh, for OS VR, Samsung Gear, hell, even Google Cardboard uh, for using the base stations from the Vive because it is a good tracking solution. Probably not the best. We're probably going to uncover more issues with it. But it was bundled from the get-go and it works. And that's the bottom line. The last story has to do with... Uh, a company that is offering a cloud-based publishing platform called Jaunt. And what Jaunt will do is allow individuals to upload VR media content. So movies, short clips, pod, you know, visual podcasts, whatever. Any kind of film or movies that use 360. Now, they're going to go through a heavy editing process. There's going to be a group. Unlike YouTube, it's even going to be stricter. That's going to vet everything. I don't know if that precludes porn and things from it. I honestly don't. Or adult content or excessive violence. I'm not sure. 
it is a form of censorship, really, you know, if they're going to kind of go through it, the panel. But what the extent of that is, how strict they will be, I don't know. But as I find out, I will report on that. But the cool side of it, let's just assume it's not a big brother ploy to control everything. Let's give them a benefit of the doubt just for the purpose of supposing where this could lead to the benefits is currently video formats differ like between one HMD from one HMD to the next. What part of their service that's going to kind of the differentiator, the difference maker, what sets them apart, they claim, is you create the video, you upload it, we will make sure it works on whatever device wants to access it. And that is pretty cool because it immediately opens up the market for the devs creating that video content to all the other devices, right? They don't have to in-house convert to four or five different units. And that is pretty cool. So there you have it, guys. I am headed to a Broadway production uh, within a few minutes, going to be leaving. So I will leave you guys with a cheer. Cheers, guys, and have an awesome one.